I share my screen. Uh, people always ask me what books I like to read. And um, let's see if I can find that nice little screen there. There it is. Uh, this is the book I'm currently reading. Um, it's an older book. But I, I love the story. I, I'm, I, it's a quick read, by the way. Um, I get uh, I usually get kin, uh, books uh, with immersive reading. I talk about that. I get a Kindle book, but I also get an Audible book. So when I'm running in the morning, um, I can listen to the book uh, on my Apple Watch with just my earphones. So it's great. I'll tell you what, if you want to exercise... And you can you can listen to a book or a podcast or even music. I do that too. Uh, the miles just disappear, and you you burn up all those good cal you burn up all those good calories where you learn some great book. I love the guy. He's so down to earth. He started with nothing, a uh, World War II veteran, by the way, um, and um, just common Midwest. I mean, the Midwest common sense just comes through on this book. Uh, I mean, he started with a, basically a little store. I think they were called Ben Franklin stores. Are they still around? Does anybody know anything about that? No, he uh, his his one of his first stores is still up and running in Bentonville. Right. It's a it's a museum now. What goes uh, like five and dimes? Yeah, it was like a yeah. five and dime shop. You guys, mm -hmm. anybody here? I'm going to really show my age here. Anybody here remember Woolworths? Sure. When I was a kid in Woolworth, you'd go to, they had a counter. They always had food in Woolworths and you'd pick a balloon and you'd get money. Uh, you'd either get a free banana split or you'd get a few, you'd get, um, you'd get some money off your purchase of whatever you got, stuff like that. Um, just fun stuff. Um, good book. Um, if you haven't read it, read it. Um, it's a, it's a quick read and I love, I love quick reads. And uh, what I was talking about before, Kindle and Audible, they have something called immersive reading, which is wonderful because sometimes you can listen, sometimes you can just read, or sometimes you can have the book while you're reading it, the narrator. And there's some really great narrators out there. So while you're reading, the narrator's reading to you. It sounds weird, doesn't it? Does anyone here ever do that? It, it's really, it, it's an interesting way to read. Am I the only one, anybody here ever do immersive reading? Oh, yeah. I listen, you know, especially when there's books that have uh, in like, you know, workshops inside the book. So you can I listen to it and I'm, I'm following along and doing the work. Since, since I started um, uh, with Audible and Kindle and I use them on my little iPad mini here and stuff like that, um, I am knocking out one to two books easily a week. And, you know, talk about good use of your time, great ideas that you get money making ideas. Uh, getting back into that reading habit again. Um, uh, another book, uh, one of my favorite authors uh, is Walter Isaacson. Um, let me see if I can find, um, the first one I read from him uh, was Steve Jobs. I love who, I love uh, Horatio Alger stories, rags to riches stories. Okay, Steve Jobs was adopted. He lived with a middle class, uh, uh, middle class family and it wasn't that he was such a genius technologically. His partner was uh, Steve Wozniak. He was the genius. But Steve was the salesman. Is that it? You guys, what do you think about that? Do you agree, disagree? Steve Jobs wasn't so technologically savvy, but he had so much common sense about what people wanted. And he was a great salesperson. He, you know, he'd come out on stage. I was in his jeans, his New Balance sneakers, and he loved black turtlenecks, just like I. I, your Uncle Claude here loves these Under Armour shirts because they don't wrinkle. Um, anybody take anybody ever read this book or have any takeaways from it? I haven't read it yet, but I know that uh, Bill Gates is the same way. He did not invent uh, Microsoft. Uh, he he bought off somebody and, and promoted it. He's a salesman, basically. Yeah. Not so much computer engineer. So yeah, yeah, sales sales can make you some money. Sales, we call that, tell, um, I think it's called, help me out, guys. I think it's called, some people have what is called emotional intelligence. They know how to adapt. They know how to verbalize that, you know, if I, my parents, when, when I was a kid, my parents, when I got a C plus, they hung it on the refrigerator. Okay. I, I did not do well in school, but I think I may, when I have something I'm interested in and I dive into it. I can absorb things like a dry sponge. 
Maybe that, but it never was reflected except for my reading score, my IQ tests, but my, my scores in school were always dismal in my lower years. It, it was really funny. I think I was bored, they told me, or something like Anybody else like that? Hey, Datrium, there you go. Um, the uh, good book, Rags to Riches. I love this story. Um, and my takeaway is he was a salesman. Elon Musk, okay, whether you people love him, people hate him, okay, you can't, The another middle-class guy from South Africa, um, just, uh, and he's just an innovator. He sees things, he, he you know, he, he sees things that other people don't see. Do you think that's the mark of an entrepreneur? Sure. He sees a need and he says, how do we solve this problem? Where, where, who are the best people? Where's the best technology? He sees technology. Kind of, he's, I saw a lot of similarities between Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. I don't know why. I, I see with uh, Elon Musk, he creates a need and then fills it. I mean, there, there was no need. We had, we, U.S. government had rockets going up, but he, he's doing a whole lot cheaper. Yeah. I mean, even, he even, is he the one who sent Captain Kirk up into space? <laughs> you know, was that him or one of the other rocket companies? I forget. Who mentioned Bill Gates? Yeah. Who mentioned Bill Gates before? Was that you, uh, Datrium or Bill or Randy? Who met Bill Gates? Bill Gates was in Harvard. He dropped out of Harvard to go to New Mexico because there was an article about a small computer in popular mechanics or something like that. And he went down there to get the code from the guy. Bill Gates was always about the code uh, on that. He saw, he saw, you know, and I think Steve Jobs was more about the hardware than the code. So kind of interesting about that. My techie people, you can comment on that. Um, another book, and this is mandatory reading. If you want to be in real estate, everybody, most of you guys are in real estate, right? And ladies, you, you, if you, if you don't read this book, you are not in real estate. This is the, in my opinion, this is one of the best books ever written on real estate because this was a guy who did it. He did it. He was a salesman. He used options and lease options and negotiation and sales tactics. I mean, he, th he was amazing. And he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth either. Uh, Zeckendorf. And this book, believe it or not, uh, a couple of years ago, this book was, it wasn't in print. And copies of this book were selling up to $300 a copy. People wanted it so bad. So they started reprinting it again. And now you can get it, uh, what is it here? $17. On Kindle, you can get it $6.99. They haven't made it into an audio book yet, unfortunately. Uh, great book. Um, and last but not least, Claudia found this book for me. She found an at a garage sale, the original Dale Carnegie, The Art of Public Speaking. Okay. Yeah. I, I cannot tell you how much your business is tied in. Well, I can. I do it all the time. Your business is tied into speaking. Me, you know, there was a time in my life, uh, I never raised my hand in school. I always sat in the back of the room. Um, uh, I couldn't speak to two nuns in a Boy Scout, okay? And, 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 and this book really helped me. It helped me to build my confidence. It helped me to overcome uh, self-imposed restrictions and things like, great book. If you can, and you can find it now too. It's in regular print. Um, this was an original, which I, I treasure. Um, but you can you can find it you can find it anywhere now on Amazon and everything. So just uh, I just wanted to share a few like a few books and ideas and things with you guys. Anybody here have a favorite book they want to share with us? Something something that you you enjoyed that moved you that gave you some ideas. I'm hearing crickets business, here. Business secrets from the Bible secrets by Rabbi from... Daniel Lapin. Tell us about it. So he's a rabbi and he obviously knows the Bible, but it's not about religion. He, he, he talks about the, the business ideas and, and what the Bible tells us and teaches us about business and how to go about doing business. So for example, uh, one of the first things he says is, you know, he says that God gave us bread. God gave man bread to eat. 
right? And so he breaks it down. He goes, why did God give us bread? Because everything in life, everything on the planet is a single element, right? We have all these different elements, minerals and whatnot. However, if you use steel by itself or, or for, let, me, let me go back to bread, you need to have more than one element to create, right? You have man, woman together. Individually, they can't create life, but you put it together and it creates something new. So in business, you have to be able to combine different aspects and different things and partnerships and so forth. So that is one of the ideas of, of, uh, that the Bible talks about. And he takes that idea and he brings it into business. So it's, it's just another way of looking at things. It's really, was, it's, it's, okay. And what was the name of that book again? Business Secrets from the Bible. Okay. I don't usually talk about, I try to stay away from politics and, and religion and things like that only because everybody's got an opinion, right? But it's not, it's not a religious book. It's not oh, a religious okay. book. It's not a religious book. He doesn't indoctrinate you on the religion. He just says, look, this is what, this, these are ideas that we can formulate and we can take out from this teaching, for example. But it's not, he's not preaching a religion to us. Good. Very good. Who else? Anybody else have a book they want to share? Favorite book, business book? Annette, go for it. Uh, I've read a lot of business books over the years. I mean, a lot of real estate stuff. But this little piece is called Rhinoceros Success. It's written by Scott Alexander. And it's real tongue in cheek. And it has to do with, you know, your life as a solopreneur. You know, you you put on that tough skin and you know, people throw stuff at you, but you just charge it like a rhinoceros. It's a quick read when you're going, when you think the world's again you, you know, you just pick this up and go, yeah, that's right. I'm going to brush my horn and get started, you know? So a little bit of fluff for the day. There you go. I love some of the stand. Oh, who go ahead, Jessica. Unmute yourself. Who, who cut that sheet? I mean, who moved the cheese? <laughs> who moved the cheese? This is a great little book. I've read that book. Short it's a... read. It's really, it's really good philosophy on life, and it's it's quick and easy to read, and it it really will kind of change the way you think. I mean, I've got so many favorite books, but this is one of the really good little one. So, you read it? Have you read it, Claude? I've read that book, and what was the first book he 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 wrote? Another book that was very popular. Um, I don't know. Okay. It might be in the cover there. It's okay. A, uh, take a look. They've written more than that one book. Chris Logan, welcome. Hey, thanks. Yeah. So a great book is uh, How to Sell with Guts manual. No, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's a good book. But um, no, books that I recommend my coaching clients are uh, are these. Hey, there I you go. Copy handy. <laughs> Listen, I've gone through that thing. I've created tags. I've highlighted everything so yeah good stuff I love, um thank you I, I, I got the check is in the mail <laughs> so two books that i recommend to all my coaching clients um great for entrepreneurs is the one thing by uh, gary keller um founder of the largest or one of the largest real estate brokerages in the country really gets you to focus so many entrepreneurs are you know all over the place and focusing on doing 10 different things at once and 10 ideas this helps you you know slim down to one idea that is the main idea that you should focus on so you can have the most success. And that was one of the biggest things that caused um, change in my business. And then the second one here is The Compound Effect by Darren, Darren Hardy. Oh. This is a really, really good book about yes. the power of small, consistent actions done every single day and can lead up to a huge end result. So that's my other favorite book. Awesome. Great book. Yeah. Small, I, this is, I'm writing this down. This is a takeaway. Mm -hmm. Small, consistent actions. What, what's some other words? Give me some, uh, what do you call a word that has the same meaning, um, a synonym? Remember that book again? Mm -hmm. Okay. A small, consistent actions. Is that a routine that you mm, can get into? Yeah. Good routines. Yep. Okay. Time blocking, all that. What's the name of that book? Habit, good habits. Good mm -hmm. habits. Can yeah. you... Can you get into a daily habit? A <laughs> compound effect, is that the name of it? By Darren Hardy? Yep. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I'm and I got a quick little tip for you guys. Um, that's really helped me with reading. A lot of people hate reading, but if you read 10 pages a day, and if you listen to the audiobook while you're uh, reading the physical book, it's been proven that your comprehension goes up by 80%. So you retain 80% more of what you read by listening and reading at the same time. 
you you oh, uh, you came a little late. I was talking about or earlier immersive uh -huh. reading, which, Love that. Which, which is just huge. From Amazon has the I think the uh, the patent on it or something. So if you buy a book on Kindle, you can mm -hmm. for less money buy the audio book, and you can either read, listen, or simultaneously do both and yeah. get the benefit of. They have the most fantastic narrators. You mm -hmm. know, a, a narrator. It's sometimes. You just, you know, you want the book highlighted while you're reading it. So if mm -hmm. you want to, you don't even have to listen to the narration. You turn off the sound and the book is highlighted and you can adjust the speed to your comfort level. Frank, you, unmute yourself. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. So a book that I found to be super pragmatic and helpful is called The Obstacle is the Way from Ryan Holiday. The Obstacle is the Way. Probably the most pragmatic, useful book I have read because it's a bunch of <clears throat> short chapters of little snippets of wisdom, but they're immensely practical. And, it, and the whole book is basically revolves around the idea of whatever challenge is in front of you, that's the way you need to go to get to where you need to be. Give me, give me one, give me a takeaway from that book. Give me another takeaway. If you... A takeaway? Yeah, up something. Uh, so. You... Something that so, um, re resonated with you that uh, you said, wow, this was worth the book price of the book. My favorite piece of wisdom from the book is when he states that no matter what happens, good or bad, just an event, there's a split second moment in time where we get to decide what that event means to us. And so the idea is events are not necessarily good or bad. It's we get to choose what any event ultimately means. And, and it's a power we always have and can never be taken away. Okay. Take action. Do something. But before doing something, decide, is this good? Is this bad? What does this really mean so that you take the right action? Do you, do you think we spend, I'm, I'm going to just be the devil's advocate here. Do you think we spend too much time with the pros and the cons when we should just go with our own human, our own common sense sometimes? Jump out of the airplane, enjoy the free fall, look at the scenery, mm -hmm. say, this is great, and then say, oh, shit, did I put on a parachute? Uh, you know, I mean, that's the way I look at That's, you know, I think sometimes we're too cautious. You can, what do you, what, what's your take on that? Too well, we certainly don't want analysis paralysis. We certainly don't want that. But it's more the idea of when something happens, like don't go into like a five-hour analysis session. And many times you might only have seconds to decide something, right? Right. But, <laughs> when you have but seconds. But to take that quick moment and go, wait a second, before I go into my emotional reaction, which is what a lot of people tend to default to, have a mo just a quick moment to go, wait a second, this is all this is. It's not more than this. It's not less than this. See, you know, really seeing it for what it is and you, not into like this big drawn out affair. Do you ever have those moments in your life where you want to respond? You want to say something and you got that devil and angel on your shoulder and you're going, I really want to say this, but maybe I shouldn't. And it's that moment. And unfortunately or unfortunately, I usually say it. I have regrets many times too, okay? But a lot of times I think it, especially in negotiation and business, do you think we should just go for it with a, do you ever have a prospect who won't let you converse with them? Okay, do you ever have it? Hey, hey, can we just get to the point? Um, what's your best offer? What's your best price? What do you want to see happen today? What do you need from me in order to do a contract today? How would you like to pay me today? Do you think sometimes we should just go for it, even though we may get retribution? 100%. What's the, what is an entrepreneur? Let's see, you know, let, go ahead, Jessica, you had your hand up before. Oh, I was just going to say that um, the more we stay in the conscious mind and actually think about what we're doing and saying, the better we're going to do. And, and it becomes like a habit. It gets easier as we do it. But a lot of people go through life. And I was one of those people. I didn't really think always about the choices that I was making or the actions I was taking. And it didn't always work out real well. <laughs> so when we're when we're thinking about stuff, 
you know, it might just be for a minute or a second, but when we're in the conscious mind, then, then we do better. I'm doing some I'm studying. Anybody here, I love Jeopardy. My Claudia and I watch Jeopardy every night. I love it. I get, I watch it on YouTube, but you can see it uh, without the commercials there. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's what it's just a fun show. How many people have uh, the first answer you had or the first idea in your head was the right one, but then you changed it. Have you ever, has anybody ever had that effect, had that happen? Yeah. Why is the first answer usually the right one? The first one that pops in your head. Intuition. Is it, is it into it? Are we to be an entrepreneur? Do you have to be intuitive? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. I think it's connected. So. You have to